Hey guys, um, this is Andrew. Um, I'm going to be doing you guys' devotionals for this week for uh, you guys' Velocity Weekly Devos. And um, I just got back from the weekend, 2011, and I thought it would be great to use that as a guiding uh, or measuring rod and a little uh, skeleton outline for what uh, you guys' devotionals might be able to uh, be like this weekend, or this week rather. And so um, I'm just going to pray for us, and then I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, dear God, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to serve you. I uh, pray that through this week, God, you would motivate us and you would give us strength to rise and be able to um, be good students and be good uh, children to you, Lord, and to the people around us, God. I uh, pray that you'd watch over us and that you would uh, help us to be able to apply these devotions to our lives, God, and apply them to school in tangible ways that people around us can see. And uh, we just give this entire time to you, Lord. Please speak through me in your name. Amen. So, um, we went through a few different things this week, and Kevin Miller taught, and he did such an amazing job. And he did four different messages. But one of the, the biggest points that Kevin made throughout this entire weekend was something he tied up for us uh, at the very end, and it was it was in Hebrews chapter eleven, and it was verses thirty two through forty. But it talked about what many Christians have kind of coined the term as the Hall of Faith, and it talks about all these people that um, that the Bible mentions that were faithful, and all these people, and it talks about certain people like Moses, and it talks about all these these really famous biblical characters who did amazing things for the Lord, like Samson. And it talks, and one thing is, is it, it would be pretty cool. If I did, if I was really faithful for the Lord, I would want it to be recorded here in the Bible because I would want everybody to know about it. But that may be part of the reason why the Lord didn't pick me to be part of the Bible. Maybe it was that pride that, that we have as humans sometimes that we need, we need the Lord to kind of give us a, a heart check sometimes and it talks about all these these people how uh, Joshua and this is starting in 11 verses 30 it talks about how Joshua uh, by faith the walls of Jericho fell as they encircled the camp for seven days and by faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe and she had received the spies with peace and then one more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and uh, Barak, uh, Samson and Jephthah, and also David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mass of lions. I think that scripture in and of itself just right there is amazing, how they were able to subdue kingdoms and stop a lion's mouth. Uh, like almost in its tracks, it just sounds so cool to be included in this list of people and these spiritual and, and biblical elites. And it says that they quenched the violence of fire and escaped the edge of the sword uh, out of weakness and were made strong, became valiant in battle and turned uh, to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting the deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And uh, still others had a trial of mockings and scourgings, and yes, uh, of the chains and the imprisonment. And they were stoned, and they were uh, sawn in two and tempted, and were slain with the sword, and they wandered about the sheep with sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves. And um, all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. And then this is kind of like, like, uh, like the closing bit. It says, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And it names all these, these different people you have. Moses, and then you have, you have Samson, and you have Barak, and you have all these different people, and Samuel, and, and all these amazing men and and, and women of, of God that are 
included here and you know i think it's so amazing that they were put here in their faith and some of the cool things that they did that the lord worked through them but you know there's many people who have given their lives to god who are mentioned here and it's only mentioned for a short amount of time but then it's it's good because now what we're able to do is we're able to take this and we're able to say you know what we don't need fame because we're faithful to god and that was an overarching theme for the weekend it was god's we, we desired god's uh, faithfulness to be faithful to jesus rather than to be famous and to be recognized for having our faith in jesus we want to be humble we want to be in submission to god rather than just be praised by men and be able to say how awesome our ministry was or how awesome the things that the Lord worked through us. And so it was really cool and it was a humbling experience on um, on just that fame versus faithfulness and which category we fall into because I find myself so often falling into this category of trying to be famous and doing everything to be seen rather than just giving it all to Jesus and doing it to be faithful to him, doing it because he commanded us. But then he talks about our reward, and that is in verse 40 again, God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Our reward is in heaven, and our reward is Jesus. And our reward is more than we could ever imagine. In being faithful, we will get so much more reward out of that than we could ever get by being made famous from being mentioned and getting people to to just read us and praise us for the good things we think that we do and we think we can accomplish but in all reality even making our own heart to beat our own lungs to breathe oxygen we can't even do because we're so limited and the lord is so powerful so why not serve the lord and be faithful to him that way he'll be faithful to us and he always always follows through he has a, a perfect love for us and his love never fails his love is so huge and so amazing that we can't even comprehend the kind of blessings and the kind of love that he pours out and he shows to us and then it just did the message really just hit me when he talked about love for just a moment he talked about um Kevin talked about his daughter Emery and Emery is four years old and she said this this quote that he that he quoted and it was um they sat down to pray one time before dinner and uh, Emery sat down and said dear Jesus we love you and we love the way that you love us and that hit me so hard because he, he said, and it brought tears to my eyes, says, how can a little girl four years old understand love than any of us could ever, better than any of us could ever understand it? And that's the kind of raw love that Jesus has for us. He has a love that only a small child with more faith than we'll ever have, a childlike faith, can understand. And we have faith in Jesus that he will reward us and that he redeems us. And just like uh we went through a couple other stories in the Bible. We talked about Micaiah, who delivered the truth to a king, and he was locked up. And as far as we know, he died in prison. But we know that the Lord rewards, and the Lord redeems, and the Lord, the Lord ultimately is gonna give us rewards for everything we experience here on earth. So I encourage you guys before I head out of here just to. Um, I'm just going to give you a list of things to read through. And I want you to be able to see the parallels. I want you to see uh, how in the first story uh, you have uh, King Jehoram who gets deceived by his own sin. And without repentance, his sin leads to his ultimate death. And then, um, and then we have a few other stories. So let me just give you the uh, scriptures and uh through this week just go through them and uh look over your scriptures and uh try to pull the application out of it so um second chronicles 21 you have the story of king jehoram 
and the result of, of sin. And then it was uh, 1 Kings 22, and this was um, Micaiah. And this is Micaiah calling out uh, uh, calling out the king, and uh, ultimately he gets locked in prison for it and, and probably ends up dying in prison for speaking the truth. And then we have Mark chapter 15, uh, verses 21. And this was uh, Simon of Cyrene. And this is a guy who helped bear Jesus' cross. And how his life changed in just a moment. And as he went to go help Christ hold the cross. That was ultimately going to murder him. How he was walking behind Christ. And, and, <laughs> and how he couldn't even see the invisible weight that Christ was holding. Of all the sins of eternity on his back. And then... Um, Finally, you have what we went through today, which was in Hebrews eleven thirty two through forty, and that was the uh, no names of the Bible and the Hall of Faith and our reward, and um, and just being faithful over being famous. So I encourage you guys just to go through these at some point during the week. Go through a different part each week and pull out application from it, draw parallels from it, and. Um, and ultimately, just seek after being faithful to Jesus. Don't seek after the fame. Just know that Jesus loves us so much and that he makes promises just like he promised King uh, Jehoram that he was going to strike down his life. And ultimately, he struck him down with a disease that slowly killed him. But we know that God makes promises. And just as he made a promise for to ultimately take this guy's life, we know that when he makes a promise to us and he's going to be diligent, he's always going to be there with us and never leave us nor forsake us. And that he has a reward for us for being 